Hey guys, it's Amber from NotableInk.com and I'm back with another card for Cut Cardstock. I have the Ellen Hudson Mondo Sakura stamp set here. We're going to jump right in. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that down below. And as always, I'll have all of the supplies listed below. So this is a beautiful large stamp and I'm going to stamp this in Stays On Pigment Ink. This is the White Snowflake Ink. And I'm stamping this on a pearlized linen cardstock from cutcardstock.com and again i'll have that linked below i like to use this stays on pigment ink on cardstocks that are semi-porous or have that kind of pearlized metallic texture because they stamp beautifully and it dries really quickly so sometimes like a regular pigment doesn't fully dry and can smear i don't find that to be the case with stays on here I have the Derwent Tinted Charcoal Pencils and I'm going to be using Sunset Pink and Forest Pine. And I'm just taping it closed because I store it vertically on my shelf. And so I know that you can barely see the white outline of the stamping here, but basically I'm going to take the charcoal pencil directly to this paper and you can see due to the texture in the paper that it goes on a little rough. And then I'm going to take a paper stump or if you have a tortillon you can use that as well and I'm just going to gently blend that color you can see that it goes on fairly dark and then once you use the paper stump it gets very soft so I'm going to do a couple layers of this technique now it's important you can see that as I was blending it and also when you're putting the charcoal on it is a little chalky and so you want to be careful about you know brushing your hand over the top of the cardstock to get the excess off I just blow it off or you could also use a soft brush but if you use your hand you have the chance of grinding those little particles into the paper and then putting some marks on the paper where you didn't intend to have it so just lightly blow on the paper and it'll blow right away so we're going to speed this up because it's the same process over and over and I'm just going to show a couple of the petals I'm leaving the tips a little bit wider and not taking the color all the way to the tip just to show some dimension. Now, as this continues to get colored, I really like how it looks with the white outline. I ended up embossing this with a platinum embossing powder and I wish I had done either white embossing or just left it as the white stamp. You'll see, um, it just gets a little bit darker and I do like the white outline of this. I think it's really soft and airy right now with um i don't know i just really it's a unique look um and I, and I do like the way that it looks so you can see that there now i'm going to add some green and i thought i was using forest pine but it's actually green moss that i'm using so it's a really light kind of ashy green color this is also going to be very subtle so i'm just going to put put it on and then i'm using the other end of my uh, paper stump just so that the colors don't get contaminated and also if I want to go back and blend out some additional pink the green is not going to contaminate the pink so either use a different stump or use the under and other end of it if you have a double-ended one now here there's a bunch of stamens and so I thought I would add green moss to the end of the stamens just to get them to show up a little bit more um I do also blend these out with the paper stump because as it is, it almost looks like, as I finish up adding this, it looks like the flowers have measles because you can't really see the stem of the stamens. And so once we do the heat embossing, it's not gonna look like the flowers have measles anymore. So here you can see this, and then we'll go ahead and, so I left my stamp in my Misty knowing that I wanted to do the heat embossing. Now the reason I didn't heat emboss at first is because I find it a little bit of a nuisance to try and color around the embossing. I don't like to color, color over embossing. So to try and avoid all that embossing, I just prefer to do it with white ink and then emboss later after the coloring was done. Now, when you're using your anti-static powder tool, if you use one, be careful not to rub too much over the coloring that you just did because you're gonna knock off some of that color. Some of my colors did get a little bit lighter and I'm using the WOW um, Metallic Platinum Super Fine Embossing Powder here, which turns out beautifully. It is a little darker, like I said though earlier, it is a little darker than what I want, wanted for this piece. I feel like it might 
overpower the subtle color just a little bit. So keep that in mind if you decide to do the same project in the same colors. You may want to use a lighter embossing powder or even a clear or pearl embossing powder like a pearl white would probably be really pretty. Would add a little bit more shimmer um, but not overpower the rest of the coloring. So here I'm just going to darken up a little bit because the coloring looks so light compared to that embossing powder. For the sentiment, I'm going to stamp the U, which is also from the Sakura, the Mondo Sakura set. I'm going to emboss that in the same platinum embossing powder. And then the wonderful die cut that you see there is from the coordinating die for the Mondo Sakura. So I trimmed off about an eighth of an inch to the top and bottom of the card panel and added Eucalyptus Curious Metallic cardstock. Um, I actually just backed it, but you could just add a strip to the top and the bottom if you liked. I'm just knocking off any additional powder with the Nouveau Surface Sweep before I go ahead and heat set this. Normally I use a smaller brush, but I couldn't find it on my desk, so I just grabbed that. Um, so go ahead and heat set this, and this isn't a glitter powder, it's a super fine, and so um, it embosses just great from the front. With a glitter embossing powder, I would emboss from the bottom first and then come around to the front. Um, but seeing as I have it backed with another piece of cardstock, I did it from the front. So here we go. And then for the sentiment, I had cut that from that eucalyptus cardstock as well and felt like it was a little hard to see. So I went ahead and cut a piece of Curious Metallic Rose Gold. I'm going to pop that on top and offset it just a little bit so that it creates a drop shadow with the eucalyptus piece. And I'll use Ranger Multimedia Matte Glue with a fine tip applicator to get this adhered to the card front. So I'll just set it down with the tweezers and then put a stamp block on it until it dries, which is only a few seconds, but the pressure of the stamp block is going to help keep it nice and flat as it's adhering. Here's a close up so you can see the pearl finish and texture to the paper and how the coloring is subtle and also how the embossing turned out. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this project today and we'll give it a try. If you do, tag me at Notable Ink and at Cut Cardstock. We'd love to see what you're creating. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button down below and consider subscribing. I will see you real soon with more inspiration. Thanks for stopping by.